Okay, so uh, ask me a question. What do you want to ask me? I have a feeling that you've got lots of questions to ask. Lots of questions. So one of the things that I'm really interested in, just because I've heard you talk a lot about um, like the law of attraction. And um, I remember I, I was just kind of going through like some of your interviews. And um, one of the guys was saying like, you're not speaking my language, like, you know, when you're kind of using some of the law of attraction terms. So how do you, um, if you're in it, because the law of attraction, it's like, it's always real. Like I tell people, like, it's always in motion, whether you realize it or not. So how do you communicate or how do you connect with people um, in explaining the law of attraction or how it's worked for you when they, when there is that kind of like um, concept barrier? Like, I, I, how do you put it in other words for people? Like if they don't understand like the law of attraction? Well, if, if, they, if they don't understand when someone's explaining it or when I'm explaining it to them, I'd normally take them through like situations in their life where they can um, realize it, realize themselves that when that thing happened and you can get them to understand why that happened by putting them back into that mindset. So when you talk about it, it's hard to get them to understand like the concept of it, whereas it's happened all the time through their life. So, for example, I'd say, when did you think of a friend or think of your nan? And then she calls up and says she's coming over for dinner. Uh, that was the law of attraction. When did you think of um, your boss um, going to call you in for work? And you just knew he would call you in and say, can you work today? And um, mm -hmm. you didn't take any action. You just knew it was going to happen. And it did happen. That's the law of attraction. Um, every time you like go past someone in the street, which you thought about, that you meet them. So then they start to understand, oh, my God, yeah, you're right. That I thought that was a coincidence. When you explain that coincidence isn't coincidence and it's simply thoughts pr prior to the event happening then they understand it and then it's just about becoming aware of their thoughts before the next event happens um because they they become aware before it happens because the past is exactly the same it's just you weren't aware so it's about becoming aware I push that a lot. And that's a lot of what I talk about is like just being in awareness to where it's just kind of in a in habit where you're just constantly in awareness, not only of your thoughts, but just your actions, how you're moving through the world, how you're interacting with people. So, yeah, it's uh, I think because I just was really blown away with that, just the way that he was just kind of like, well, you're not speaking my language. But even though he, you weren't speaking his language, he was still able to kind of paraphrase what you were saying and was able to, in his own mind, kind of bring it back full circle. So I thought that was really interesting because I run into people a lot and they're like, well, I just don't know how to explain the law of attraction to people. And it's like, and I always just say, you know, like it is what it is. So you don't necessarily have to explain it. Sometimes you do kind of have to pull words out of the ether that maybe are closer to what their knowledge or their concepts are. But yeah, I just thought that was an excellent way of uh handling that absolutely so yeah that was awesome that's the thing most people they um they understand things in their own way like we all speak you know english we all speak spanish or french or whatever but we all understand the feeling in us like whether it's god the voice in your head your dead grandmother coming through in spirit or hearing your father say something to you that third voice is just a voice of wisdom and knowledge from someone else so it doesn't matter who it is how you get there it's the same message the same feeling like when an animal wants to eat it, it just looks at the other pack and it's just like, we need to migrate now. You don't have to say anything. You just have that feeling of, we know what to do. So law exactly. of attraction is just um, like, when you try to explain it, you just have to get them to feel, feel like what it is. And you have to say different words because they, they might not realize that this word is connected to that word because they might think that that word is not relevant. So you just have to say like lots of different words and hopefully it will trigger something off and they will reflect themselves. Like when I speak, I make it very broad. I speak about lots right. of different things and then people grab that, they grab that and they go, oh my God, I understand now. It's not just like, one way it's not yeah. linear and i do think that because i think sometimes words can get in the way so that's excellent the way you said just keeping it very broad people are able to kind of pull out the words that they need from the ether to kind of connect 
for them. And because everybody is in their own level of understanding or, and they're, they're constantly evolving, hopefully. So there are certain words that maybe you might've tossed out now that wouldn't connect with someone that maybe in a couple of months or a couple of years, they could come back and completely understand what you were saying, just because their own personal experiences have brought them around to that point. So yeah, that that's excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I find that when um, I say something now, I know that in the future, based on past experiences, that they're going to become aware of something I said. Like they may take 10 years to get to that point. <clears throat> it may happen in two years time or next month. But when I teach people, I know that a, an event will happen and they will think of what I've said. And then they're one step closer to this awareness or this enlightenment. And um, they might not yeah. get it now, but it will trigger off something in the future that, oh my God, that's what you said, it makes sense. And if they continue that journey, I'm just one teacher out of many, or it might just be, oh my God, that's what he said, that's what you meant, and then that's the end of it. Like, you just stay, and that, that's it. So and it becomes like a knowing. It's like, absolutely, it's like it goes from like a concept to an actual knowing. Like, it becomes like a part of you and how you operate and a part of your awareness. And that, I think, is probably the hardest thing to explain to people. I always tell people, like, you'll know when it clicks. Like, you'll feel it when it clicks. <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah um yeah, like people have to be um, like ready to like evolve, but also their lifestyle and their patterns and their family and their friends and their work and their environment is part of the past. So you can't just suddenly like go jump into enlightenment because you, you, you're stuck with physical stuff all around you. Like that's years and years and years worth. So that's why people can't just suddenly get lose weight overnight or they can't just you know, cure cancer overnight or they can't just change jobs overnight it takes a mental shift and that takes time like it takes a lot of time and that's just the mental side you've got to figure the physical side and your friends and your family and all the physical things around you like if you've got to go to the post office and you've got a half painted bedroom and you've got to forgive all these people and pay back debts that's a lot of shit you've got to do first before you go into the future because that will drag you back Exactly. And a lot of times I work with people where they get very frustrated, like they'll, they'll be going along, they're excited, oh, I'm in awareness, like they're feeling it. And then they'll hit that point, like maybe after a couple of months or something where it's just they're kind of stuck. And they immediately like want to give up or they think that they're doing it wrong. And ab you're absolutely right. I'm like, understand all of that junk that you have to push out of the way and that you got to work through first because it literally has all of those thoughts those actions your environment the, the concepts that you've taken in they have literally manifested as your physical world around you so yeah the same way that it took to build those layers up sometimes you have to either tear down or move out of the way but yeah it definitely is a process like it's not something overnight that's why i tell people like even when you see like the the way weight loss stuff where it's like lose this amount of weight in 30 days and it's like and it, it might work that way but it might not be the healthiest way to lose it because there is a process that you have to go through and kind of shedding those old beliefs or that old heaviness and weight in order to build up that new from not just from because like I tell people it's your thoughts it's like you start with your thoughts there's nothing that you see in the world around you that was not created from a thought first so you start with those and being aware but it is a process process and it's like so I'm glad that you said that it's like it's not going to be an overnight process I explain that to people they'll hit that wall and then they kind of like go down on themselves like ah oh, I'm not doing it right I'm not and it's like no you're absolutely like in the process like embrace it and keep moving forward it's like absolutely oh yeah this is why a lot of fat people they end up losing the weight and putting it back on because mentally and they're still right the same back. they've had their gastric band they've had their shakes and they've cut out meat and shit like that They've gone to the gym because a personal trainer is there telling you to do the press ups. But the minute you stop paying him, the minute he's not there, you relapse back to the old patterns. Like, um, like cancer will spread once it's cured if you keep doing the same things of why you got the disease in the first place. So you have to change your environment, change your thoughts, change your food, your smoking, yeah. your alcohol habits. That is the reason why your body was in disease in the first place. And um, you, it, that's why it's a long process. Like when I was uh, when I was enlightened of all this stuff. I literally removed every single physical belonging I ever had, right? I got out of debt. I didn't work. I binned everything I had. All I was left with was a bed and me in my bedroom, a bed and me. I'd no, been my laptop, been my phone, 
came off all social media, removed all my friends off social media. I said goodbye to my friends. I didn't see them for like four or five years. I didn't have a phone. I became an isolated monk until I managed to accept and embrace that this was what life was always like. And I need to embrace it now. And once I can, then I can build into uh, material stuff and money and cars and shit like that. And then I looked at my parents' life and I realized that I was like I was because of them. And I started to take two, three years to teach them all that I knew. And I binned the mm. contents of their house. I went into the loft and mm. I binned mm. the whole loft. There was 15 years worth of stuff in that loft. It would go on the landing. So she, my mum will get a new lampshade. It would go on the landing in the loft. She'll get a new pillow, landing, loft. There's like 50 pillows, 50 suitcases, 50 quilts, 50 lampshades. Mm. I'll deal with it another time. I'll put it to charity another time. I'll sell it another time. And that just 15 years kept happening. The landing was flucking cluttered, loft. Next lot, cluttered, loft. She always wanted new carpet, paint the walls, get my dad to do this, do that. And it was always, she was never happy. She wanted new walls, new painting. It was, yeah. she was never happy. And so it was about being content within. So then what I did was, is I binned everything in the loft. I took 40 trips to the dump, right? I binned everything in the loft. I then got loft boxes and I ordered all my dad's stuff, all my mum's stuff and the family stuff. So I separated all their bollocks from when they were teenagers. When they were 16, they, you know, got together. But they had, their life was, it was locked. It was just cluttered. Was they were that? locked. And they yes. were starting to fall out of love with each other because it was all about trying to keep their love together whilst they had kids. And I was a big nightmare and they're trying to give me the energy. They forgot about each other. And I was like, I can't make millions of quid because my parents are getting divorced and I'll have made the money for no reason because the family comes first. So I decided mm -hmm. to stop my business and I decided to teach my parents. I binned everything on the loft. I binned all the fucking billions of light bulbs, billions of needles and threads and cotton buds and fucking 400 deodorants open and 400 cans of shampoo, 10 mm -hmm. toothbrushes, mm -hmm. All bloody seven pairs of scissors, five bowls, always bollocks that you don't even need. And I eventually started to bin stuff without them realizing. So I'd bin one saucepan, bin this, bin this scarf, bin this jacket. Yeah, and they wouldn't realize until half the house was gone. And they started to be like, where's my saucepan? Where's my shoes? Where's my lampshade? And then she'd realize that, fuck, where's this gone? Where's that gone? So when she's over there trying to find that, I'm binning stuff over there, but it will take here. a few weeks. It will take a few weeks for her to get around to see that. And then when she starts to move around here, I go around there. And then she goes, "Where's this gone?" And I go around there. "Where's this gone?" So she's on catch up yes. until I've binned everything in the house. Okay, I've removed the past because all this bollocks and all this painting and lampshades and clothes were materialistic. It was a thought because you were unhappy. You didn't need it. You didn't want it. So that has to go because that will pull you back. And then we were neutral. Everything in the house was just basic, like TV, furniture, lampshade. The loft had nothing in it anymore. The loft had all their photos from the past and it was all ordered. Fucking, I'm talking like 30 years worth of files and bank statements from years and years and years, just gone in the loft. I had to go through all of that shit, right? And so I put everything in order. I removed the past. Then we were present. My mum just had not much in the house. And then I gave her money. I was working. I was giving her money to then replace all the stuff that I binned. And then I bought her all the things she wanted to get. So I got the new paint. I got the new lampshade. I got the new sofa. I got the new pillows so she could become aware. I've got all the stuff. Every all fucking wall in the house is painted. All the carpets are done. The wooden floor's done. I'm, I'm, I, I'm still not happy. And then you sort of surrender. And let me tell you something. The walls haven't been painted in three years. And my mum used to paint every like wall, bathroom, kitchen, toilet, fucking conservatory. It was all about change. So outcome change, symbolizes yeah. change. And I need change. But it's not the wall. It's not a new husband. It's not a bigger house. Okay, it's not money. And I had to show my mum, I'm giving you money. It's not money. I'm giving you stuff to buy new stuff. It's not the materialistic stuff. And then again, she surrendered. Everything, she's got everything she wanted. There, she's falling back in love with my dad. The loft's clean. She now doesn't put stuff in the loft. She now deals with it immediately. And she has never been so powerful and so free and so happy in her life. And I believe going it. through that process, it was hell because I had to basically like fucking make you face Satan inside you, face the devil and fight him off. Like fight that demon of holding on to that materialistic thing or you're a, you're a bastard and i was just like focus 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 and now we have entered we've gone through hell we've entered heaven and everything is perfect oh.
Absolutely. And, and it's, it's amazing because people will think that it's like, if I can just shift these outside circumstances, then everything will feel better or be better. And I, I constantly, and I'm, I think that I'm really fortunate because I was raised in that kind of mindset. Um, my parents were um, as my grandmother says, kind of like free will and hippies. So I kind of was raised in that kind of environment. And I realized in like my early, I'd say late twenties, early thirties that I had kind of gotten away from that. And it's like, but it's, it's amazing. And now that I've come back to that and I teach people about it and it's like understanding that all of that, the change that's really necessary is literally the internal one first. And it's like, and once you can get to that state of stillness or that state of peace where it's, I always I have a saying that I, I tell my kids, I have adult sons and my grandkids, but I'll, I'll tell them and say, um, it is what it is. And it's like, and when you can get to that acceptance where it is, where there is a sense of peace internally, no matter what is going on on the external, then it becomes so much easier to move in your own personal power like that and to really create in your outside circumstances exactly what you want and exactly what, as you said, that contentment is. It's like, but it definitely starts the internal. And I think we get, there's so much noise, so much noise in our world, like all day, every day. I'm amazed when I talk to people and they'll say, and I'll say, well, do you sit even for like five minutes and just in complete silence? People always say like when they come to my house, they're like, I walk in and it feels like a monastery in here. Like you're always quiet and people can walk by my house and they're like, it's completely silent. And it's like, really, if I'm not actually doing something, like I literally am in stillness and in silence. And it's like the most peaceful thing. But if you can make decisions, if you can think, if you can be in awareness from that point, it's like things move so much easier on the outside. You really can kind of control your external so much easier. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm say, sure your mom <clears throat> thanks you like a lot. <laughs> that's the I'm thing, sure she right? does. That's the thing. I, I, I know it's a black and white change with her and whether she like she knows deep down that I what I did was was because of me. And but it, I don't want the credit because I did it for love. So she doesn't need to give me the credit because she's the one who had to go through the process of go through the process. So it's not about the credit. It's, I had a goal. I knew that it was like divorce or this. I took a risk, three years of my life, I quit my business, I, I, I had to start again basically. I'm a monk making a, a new house basically because I, I had to start again. And this is all about me creating my career because I want to I wanna have my talk show and I take over James Corden's talk show. So this is the first step. I'm 27, I should have made it by now, but I had to divert, fix my parents, you know, make them enlightened because they were just chasing this non-existent thing that wasn't there. I knew if I didn't do anything, then they wouldn't be here basically. Um, so yeah, it all starts from internal and then you don't seek anything external, but you can choose to have it. And these days it's all about finding external things to provide that happiness, which doesn't exist. And so you're chasing and chasing, mm -hmm. chasing, you're saving for the new thing, the iPhone, and it just doesn't end until you realize it's not out here, it's within. It's within. I always tell people because I hear a lot and I work with like um, a lot of artists, a lot of creatives. And um, one of the favorite terms they'll say is like, well, I'm chasing the money or I'm trying to get the bag. But I always tell people like if something is chasing you, what is your first reaction? So it's run. like, I'm going to run if something's chasing me. So if you're chasing happiness, like it's going to do its best to avoid you. So it's like, that's why I tell people, it's like, you literally have to be in a, an internal state where happiness is. It's like, no matter what the external circumstances are, happiness is. <laughs> and it's like, and from that, if you can move from that point, then there's nothing in the external that you cannot uh, deal with, like in a, in a very balanced way. And like you were saying, it just, and then it becomes a where it's not something that you need in the external but you can choose and it's like and i think that's definitely the difference and that's where the power comes in absolutely if you look, if you look at power if you look at a lot of rich people they've got massive houses they say it's not a home it's a house as in everything's all perfectly aligned they've got sofa they've got their 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 chair in the middle then they've, they've got the plates already made yeah they might not have any guests coming over but it's all like robotic it's like a showroom right it's yes. not that it's not homely because these people it, they're, they're often they understand they've made it because they get it like you have to you don't just get lucky you have to have the mindset of structure organization order to run a fucking company where you can have a 20 million pound house so yeah and often there's no photos and it's all to do with when you're present those photos are the past and and that was then 
And if you look at that photo of your kid when it was five, you're constantly going back to the time when that kid was five and all the friends and the patterns and the wife and nagging you about that. And you can't be present. So I don't have photos, right, because of that reason, because it takes my mindset back there, which was then. I'm not that person now. And, I'm not um, that person. and these people, they have to have a structured brain in order to have that money running their company. So that's why they have just simplicity, a white bathroom, white tiles, there's no magazine, there's no bollocks. It's just doesn't feel homely compared to the average person's health, which is full of bollocks, right? But well, there's a reason it? why, because they need to have order and structure. It needs to be clear. And that is why they just have like beds made and there's no one there because it's just about clarity. Absolutely. That's absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. Let's see. All right. Can we... oh. Sorry about that. I'll, uh, sorry, I did not... Can you hear that? I'm sorry. That Let me see. No, I can't hear anything. I can't hear any sound. Oh, okay, good. All right. I was going to say, I just got to call that. Are you okay? Um, let's see. Sorry about that. Um, so when, now let me ask you a question. Now I kind of had a little bit of controversy over, um, just over the past couple of days, because did you see the, um, Oprah Winfrey, um, she did a talk like a couple of days ago and she kind of, um, fell on stage. Did you see that video? It was like circling around on social media on stage didn't yeah so it was oprah she was giving a talk i believe in like california know, so, so or somewhere good. and um so she actually was she was literally in the process of talking about balance and like wellness and what it what her definition of it was and in the middle of the process she said that i believe it was like my definition of wellness includes like you know um balance she said but it does not have to be um at peace and I can't remember what the other part of it was but like as soon as she said that like she literally tripped and fell on the stage so I had just kind of made a comment and I was like you know so there's some there's somewhere it's out of alignment somewhere in what she was saying like what she, I was like the universe kind of immediately responded back like when she said you know um wellness to me means balance but it doesn't have to be at peace and it doesn't have to be and like literally while she was saying it like blam like really hard on the stage and this woman has been like doing tv for like 30 years i've never heard of her falling slipping anything and so i just really thought that it was just a really amazing way of like um just the universe kind of clapping back really fast. So, and I just kind of made a comment about that. And I was like, well, there's somewhere out of alignment in her universe with what she's saying or says that she believes and like what the universe is kind of like going on in her life. And so I just, what do you think about that? Like, cause I do feel like sometimes words, um, we we say certain things, but it's not necessarily our true intention or what we necessarily believe. So how do you what what do you think about that? Okay, first of all, your camera's turned um, portrait. Can you turn it landscape? Um, yeah, I sorry, I'm sorry, I'm getting a call in. So give me just a moment. Let me see. Uh, all right, you can see. put "Do Not Disturb" on on the. You can you know swipe up from the top of your screen and press "Do Not Disturb," and it won't allow any okay. calls. Let's do that. Okay. But don't right. do airplane mode because it will cut us off. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. All right. Sorry about that. I'm getting, yeah, I think I've got, my visitors are outside, so I apologize for that. So, yeah, I just, because I, I did get some flack online when I posted that, and I was like, well, there's something out of alignment there with what she's saying that she believes and necessary, like how she necessarily is living day to day. So I did get some flack about it, but I do, like I was saying, just being in total awareness like that in um, understanding the words that you use um, to kind of explain the concepts that you're living. And it's like, and I do, I'm very conscious of the words that I use. Um, I am very conscious in, because I do believe that words are like living things, like they can shift and they change. And so I just found that it was just really fascinating to me that um, that was the way that um, she like that was the immediate reaction to what she said so yeah what did you think about that did you see the video at all so first of all i've not seen the video but i will explain what's happening right so <clears throat> i have experienced this multiple times i know 
I, I've, I've mastered this, right? So I will be holding a glass and I know, for example, that I'm going to drop this glass. And if I don't choose to put it down, I end up dropping it, right? You drop they it. Say, they say that people, surgeon, doctors always die from the um, disease that they're treating. So uh, there's, there's like, it's many stories, like somebody who's treating cancer died of cancer, somebody who's treating bowel cancer or whatever dies of bowel cancer. It's because they're so focused on every single minute detail on that thing that that becomes their reality. And by them not taking action or doing certain things, ends up creating it and manifesting it. So um, if, for example, I am uh, driving and I knew that, um, like, for example, I was driving once and um, there was a wooden pallet in front of me on a truck that wasn't tied down and it was really, really windy. And I said to myself, that's going to fly out and fly through my windscreen. So I moved over to the next lane and when I moved over to the next lane, a few seconds later, the wooden pallet flew out and landed on the floor and smashed to pieces. And that would have gone through the windscreen as I visioned. Now, I knew that was going to happen. Um, certain things happen where, for example, I'm uh, holding my phone over the toilet and I suddenly become aware I'm going to drop this down the toilet. And when I haven't taken action and put it down, the phone drops down the toilet. And there's multiple times when I have become aware of a thing like if I don't take my socks off I'm going to slip over on the floor and I end up slipping over so now for example I take my socks off when I get that thought I put my phone down when I'm having a poo and I would uh, hold the glass better if I uh, feel like it's going to slip and for example if I'm holding a cup of tea right and I'm holding a plate in my other hand if I suddenly become aware that I'm going to trip up the stairs and my food's going to go everywhere I know from past experience that it happens mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. what I do is that I put the plate down and I change my grip. I will put the tea down and change my grip because I know from experience, if I think of something, it happens. So in terms of mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey, there's two ways this happens. You're thinking about it so much that it manifests because when you think of something, it's controlled your, it's, uh, your, your, ner your nervous system is controlled by exactly. thoughts. And so by me holding the cup, I have become aware that my nervous system and my muscles in my hand are not holding that cup in the same way that I know I used to. And because my nervous system isn't holding my you know, cup like I normally do, it's telling me your hand isn't as strong. You're going to drop this. And it's signaling, sig signaling to me that I'm going to drop this, which is based on I feel like I'm not holding the cup as I normally do. And of course, I drop the cup. So when she's thinking about balance and shit like that, it's because she has literally said the word balance and her body has taken on the responsibility of that thought and yeah. her nervous system isn't the same. So her foot, her, her power in her muscles and her feet aren't the same. And it happens because she was thinking about it. But also the alternative to that is that um, you are uh, the alternative is that the only reason why she's mentioning balance is because she is aware maybe through her age, that she is starting to lose balance. And so because it's on her mind, she's yeah. thinking about it more. And actually, she's just losing her balance because she's getting older. But it's because she's thinking about it. She's speaking about it. And sooner because or later, become a she would have said it. Yeah. 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 Sooner or later, she would have said because it. Because I, and I thought that it was very interesting that it was immediately upon using the word balance that she tipped over and I was like wow and it's like so yeah that just really stuck out to me but you're absolutely right it's like that focus became like literally it just kind of maybe locked her into place in that moment and it and yeah absolutely it's okay. like yeah. it's like hypnosis there's a hypnotist called Darren Brown <clears throat> where he used to go into the street bump into someone in the middle of the road as they're walking across the zebra crossing and he used to like hypnotize them and say something to them and they used to be stuck and they couldn't move. Now, obviously they can choose to move, but Darren Brown, the person hypnotized them not to move. So they followed the command of the thought. So if that command is Darren Brown's voice and Oprah Winfrey, that is that voice of God or just a thought in your head that can control the nervous system. For example, that person couldn't move from standing still. So mm -hmm. thoughts and frequencies and sounds control the nervous system because otherwise you'd be able to move and continue walking. Absolutely.
Absolutely. Yeah, I thought that was just really interesting. And she was able to recover really quickly. But that is one of the things that stood out. Because I do tell people like what you focus on grows. Or also, and it's like, and putting that focus, it can be in a positive way. Like, yes, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm excited about this. But it can also be the exact opposite with something negative as well. And it's like, and that's kind of one of the things I tell people in like manifesting and in, in just being in awareness and seeing in what direction those thoughts flow like that because sometimes we can focus and then especially like being on stage and being a speaker myself and knowing that you're kind of constantly in your head while you're presenting you're kind of plotting on the stage you're making sure that your steps are numbered so that you don't trip so there's so much going on at the same time so I just thought it was interesting that that's kind of where her brain clicked with the balance while she was on stage like that so yeah and like I said 30 years of being like on stage and being on fun. And I've never heard of her like tripping or falling or anything. So I just thought that that was really interesting. And that I feel like was a really good insight, even where you were saying just some of the, like with the age and understanding that there's a shift in balance when you're reaching a certain age. And that could have been something just in the back of the mind, but yeah, I thought that yeah, was really- Everything that someone speaks about, they've already thought about it or it's playing on their mind. So as yeah. I said, you don't know how many times she's and over at home and the reason why she's speaking about it is because she's becoming aware of it herself and therefore coming to terms with it by teaching and telling people about it uh, but also the nervous thing like when I'm holding a cup of tea and I get this feeling I'm going to drop it and I always fucking drop the tea and it's like well how did I know that and it's because the nervous system isn't the same the muscles in my hands are not it doesn't feel right and I can't consciously I don't know this consciously subconsciously I can feel something is different and you don't know why you just know something isn't right like um, a mother's instinct where you feel like there's something with your child you just you don't can't explain it and it's all connected to like um, you know energy and nervous system and, and stuff like that absolutely absolutely because that energy is constantly moving and that's what I tell people and like a lot of times that's what people it gets in the way even trying to put a, a word to that feeling it's like but I teach people just recognize that feeling understand when it does start flowing through you you kind of jumped onto that current understand and recognize that the current is moving and then react from that as opposed to sometimes slowing it down by trying to put a, a word or a name to it because a lot of times people will say well I I, I, when it happens, I kind of, I think it's like, and it's like, you don't even have to explain it. It's like, because like you said, even your nervous system, your whole energetic being understands it and immediately goes into action. It literally just requires you being aware enough to move with it and not kind of resist it or try and control it. And it's like, that's one of the things. And I think that the more you're able to relax into it like that, then you are able to be aware. Like you said, every time it happens, like I'm able to be aware or every time I'm not, and you can notice like those patterns. I think that's one of the, the most incredible things. Um, and I love to see when people discover that once you start being in awareness, how you notice all of those patterns, like those patterns just start popping up. And it's like, whoa, how did I not ever notice this before? You know, so that I think is just incredible, just being able to stay in that awareness, whether you can name it or not. Absolutely. Yeah, like uh, um, <clears throat> words have come from uh, feelings. A feeling was like, I'm hungry. And then you'd make a sound to, um, to tell yeah. the other animal, the other ape, let's go and find some food. So you go, blah, blah, or food or whatever language you come from. So that the, 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 the words have come from language and words have come from feeling. So if a feeling is a, is a, is a vibration and that word is, symbolizes that vibration and that feeling, then words are the same as feeling. So if you're thinking negative or feeling positive, then uh, it's the same as thinking bad things or good things. And you're going to gravitate towards that negative vibration as you would positive vibration. So the words are no different whether you choose to see someone who you don't like because you're thinking about them or you just will naturally bump into them in the street. It's the same thing. And I tell my parents, don't be careful what you think about because you know they always say it becomes things but it literally does and um i it always literally does yeah i always uh, um, bring up situations where <clears throat> i think about something i think about some food i want my mum to buy or whatever and she always buys that food i don't have to say anything anymore i think about olives or i think about something for dinner or i think about anything i think about a place to walk the dog and she always comes to me and says Oh, I've got this. We're going here, and I I controlled her and her mind by my own th by my own thoughts. Which and so therefore, if I can control your mind by my positive thoughts, then put negative thoughts do the exact same thing because it's just thoughts. Mm -hmm. So um, I taught her not to focus on the things she doesn't want, 
and to focus on things she does want um because it was always lack of with her uh, rather than what she already has and it's night and day between her like the other day i was we're going for a walk and she became me she was like to my dad my dad was like oh i can't be bothered to walk for two hours she's like look around look at the trees appreciate the nature look at the sky and my dad was like she sounds like you and i was <laughs> i just stood there like my job's done this is exactly my what job I is done that's this, it so, so, no it's like this is exactly what I visioned like five years ago, my mum becoming this independent, powerful being like she was, but she lost her way because when she had me, all the energy went on me and it was a fight for me and her. Like you forgive your child and everything, you forget about yourself. And I was a bird that kept cheaping and she kept giving the worm for like 21 years. She didn't, didn't have time to get her own worm. And I realized that I was the problem and only I could find the solution because only I knew how she worked and how she thought and how to, to get her where she needed to be and she didn't do it by choice I had to force it I had to force things and then when I took control of the house I ended up moving things and it became a game of awareness so for example it would be stop moving this <laughs> and then I made it as if like she has to try and guess what I've moved so then she'd come home and she'd notice that the frame was moved or the clocks I changed the timing on the clock and, and it, it, rather than, can you stop changing the clocks? It would be, I know you've changed the clocks. And yeah. then next day it would be, I'd move the pillows around and she'd like pillows. Mm -hmm. And then I'd, I'd put the menu in different drawers. She'd like, you'd move the menu. And it became a game of like, try and catch me out. So it went from stop trying to control my life to she's gaining control of her life. And now she yeah. knows where the menus are, what clocks are changed, what clocks are slow, what photo was where what is where, and she knew everything in her house. She came control of everything. She had so much awareness, so much awareness. She could tell you what's moved, where things were, where's this, where's that, why was that there, where was that before, and, and she became so aware. And I used to come in the conservatory and change like the, uh, the photo frame the other way, and I'd go in there and she'd turn it back round. It was a game of awareness. And she, yeah, Taking nice, the control, nice. and her, taking the control back in her own way where once I knew she had control and she had the awareness I stepped down and I didn't need to flick things around anymore because my job of making her aware was done that's it he's like my job is done here that's right and it's amazing because it does become a game and I find like I said I've been doing this for 30 years plus and it's like it still is a game like every day like oh and I, I do have that people know it's like I can walk into a room and I can immediately tell you like all right something's missing here this was up here like and I'm on and people are like how did you even notice that? And it's like, it's just, you're, I'm in the habit of being in constant awareness. And it's like, and once you can get to that point, you're amazed at how much more of everything there, there is in the world. You know, and I always tell people, I just say all the time, like there's more than enough of everything for everyone. And people used to be like, oh, there you go. But it's like, but the more aware you are, the more you are able to see, like you were saying with your mother, like, oh, look at the trees. Look at, like, look, think about how much more fulfilling your whole life gets when you go from the perspective of, I'm just walking down the sidewalk to get to the house, as opposed to, I'm walking down the sidewalk. Look at the beautiful trees. Look at how green they are. Look at the people that I'm coming in contact. Like, it literally makes your life fuller, but in a way that's not heavy. And it's like, and it allows you to kind of move through the, just, like I said, I tell people all the time, just stay in constant awareness. You will be amazed at how much more enriched your life is without having to actually carry so much baggage. Oh yeah. True. I, can, I can go to any place. I can go to someone's house and I'm there for like 10 minutes and I can go home six days later, two weeks later, two months. I can close my eyes and tell you what everything is. I can say your bookshelf was there. You had a Harry Potter book there. Your charger was over there by the hairdryer, your bed. I can tell you exactly everything in your house, even in the toilet. And I've only been in there once because when you, when you are just aware, you absorb everything. It's all light. You and I find that it. people who try and memorize stuff, 
can't because that's not how you memorize stuff. You just listen. Exactly. Like I'll remember this conversation forever because I'm just aware and listening. Most people like me, I'll be listening to what you're saying. My internal um, commentator would repeat and relay what you're saying. And then I'll be on catch up trying to remember it as you're saying it. And then I've got to try and think about what you just said. And then what you're saying just becomes further and further away. And I'm like, yes. I, can't, I don't know what you were saying. I'm lost. And that's why at school, I couldn't learn because I was always trying to re um, re remember what the teacher was saying by relaying it to me. And all I had to do was mm -hmm. listen. And it's the same for like waiters. They don't in their head go, okay, gin and tonic, whiskey on the line, chicken prawns of chicken on the That's You can't fucking do that. Just listen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you go to the kitchen, you might not get the food in that order. It will come to you naturally. And then as long as you've got six dishes and there's six customers, that's it. Who cares whether you do the line first because he, you took his order first. And then that's it. It's about letting go and being present. Don't try and remember. Just, exactly. just be present and you will remember exactly. every goddamn thing you see and hear. I know everything. That's it. That's it. Oh, yeah. You're so right with that. I tell people that all the time. I always, one of my favorite sayings I always say, and I used to say it all the time to my sons when they were younger. I used to say, listen and hear. It's like, listen and hear. And not just with the ears, but literally with the whole body. And like you were saying, take it in. So as it becomes a part of you, then you can, like you said, and it doesn't matter what the order is because it's all there. So you can actually pull it out as you need to. And that's one of like yeah it's one of my favorite things that i say it all the time listen but and my kids will say why i heard you and it's like are you sure it's like you listen but did you hear me and then they'll they'll laugh they'll say okay all right i'll, I'll do that. it's like but that's the thing is getting to the point where you're naturally and constantly hearing with the whole entire being and just taking it all in and as i told you it's like you can take it in let it move through you you don't have to memorize anything it doesn't have to be by rote because when it's by rote it's not natural and there is that stutter in 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 the process in the actions there's a stutter there because like you were saying it's not natural so it's not a natural flow as it goes through absolutely it's like Absolutely. if you look at birds, for example, right, it always amazes me, for example, that there's there's birds flying around my garden. Right. And as soon as I throw a bit of bread or, or, or anything like a bit of sausage, a bit of crisp, those fucking birds know that there's a change you know? in the physical environment. And they know mm -hmm. that that thing wasn't there before. The same as if you've got um, um, uh, a bird's nest. Right. A bird knows how that nest was when it left. And if, for example, humans seen that bird's nest or something's moved or a fox has come by that bird knows it knows that there's a difference in the surrounding so humans have also the same ability they know when there's a difference in the environment so you don't have to try and remember that your sofa was there and your top was over there your brain is just noticing what's there and what isn't there it knows what's changed and what hasn't it's just animal instinct for survival because if you are trying to survive from like a, a fox or a lion and you're like a little duck you have to know when the patterns change. What was that bush there before? Was what is that? Is that a tail or is it a twig? Like that could be a fox about to kill me. So we are designed exactly. to notice change for our own survival, and um, just being aware is is all you need. And you will notice things, and you'll notice what things weren't there. It's just how it is. But we think, yeah. yeah. You're absolutely right. And that's what I tell people. It's like, that's the hardest. A lot of times people, they like to jump ahead because a lot of what I do and a lot of what I, I coach and work with people is literally just in um, the resilience. So being able to bounce back, being able to kind of readjust to whatever is kind of tossed in your path and being able to navigate around it or go through it. So a lot of times people want to jump straight through that, but or straight to that point. But the awareness, just being able to naturally um cement that in and to where it becomes a part of you it's like i think from that that's probably one of your strongest super uh, powers definitely like that's probably one of the strongest things that you can do and it's like and that lays the foundation that cements in your ability to navigate I, I call it the bounce back but literally one of the strongest parts of the bounce back is being in full awareness because like you said as an animal if you don't know the difference between that twig and the foxtail you're gonna get got and it's like so that's the thing is literally being able to tell yeah you're absolutely right uh, which yeah, is amazing so is i just that. became aware of that as i spoke about it i just put two and two together as i spoke about it like, i've not thought about that before 
Um, so I just literally came aware of, of when I throw a bit of bread in that bird nose and how the brain tries to memorize stuff, but it already has the tools anyway. So I just became aware of that. So I thought about it. It's like, what? Yeah, that's right. That is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you have any questions for me? I, t I just talk and then things just flow. Like, I don't, I don't, just, like, cause you know. that, yeah. So I, cause even on my show, like I don't have a structure like that because I do try to stay so much in awareness. I just really try to move with it as it comes. So yeah, I will say that this has been probably one of the smoothest conversations that I've had just in a long time with someone. The, the more you can tell, the more the level of awareness, it just easier. You, like I said, you're kind of, you ride that wave. And a lot of people, and like I said, when I'm trying to explain it to people, sometimes the words will get in the way. They won't understand the concept. But it's like you will, like how you were saying, even with your, your and I go back to that again, with your mom kind of taking on the persona of Oliver and saying, well, look at the trees, look at this. And it's like because it's so much of her training herself to be in awareness like that, that it was natural for her. And although it seemed to your dad, like it was her being you, but it was something that was becoming natural to her in a way that she could, without thinking, just say that off like, oh, come on, like, let's tune in here. And it's like, yeah, so I just think that once you can, you, you catch that wave a little bit and you just kind of ride the current. And I think a lot of times we pull ourselves out of it because we will stop and try and define it, you know? And it's like, so just being able to ride it is awesome yeah it's like so like I said I, I think your mom I I would love I, I would love to see your mom like in her full powerful self because when you are in awareness like that it really does allow you to step into your full power you are able to create and to manifest and to move in a way that is very very light and that feels very natural it's frozen say that last 10 seconds again I said you're able to move in a way that becomes very light and very natural as opposed to having to stop and think before you do anything. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an incredible current to ride, definitely. Um, the power of silence is something that many don't have a clue about. It's not like people feel silence with, with bollocks, right? And there's so much power in even five seconds of silence between two human beings. Most people don't even last a second they're automatically thinking that they're thinking it's awkward and so they have to fill it and they're not thinking that but actually they are thinking it because they know you're thinking it because everyone's thinking it but no one's thinking it like it's just like this thing where if it's silent it's hashtag awkward it's not a fucking joke like being silent is powerful because it amazing shit happens like exactly amazing stuff it's like you go into like a meditative mindset for that five seconds of waiting for that person to speak and then when you're in that mindset your frequency changes and amazing stuff happens and it, yeah and you're able to create on such a, a different level it's like yeah you're absolutely right and I think a lot of times like I said I, I frighten people sometimes that I am able to just know like you just went completely silent and it's like yeah but they're, they're, when at first it starts off as feeling kind of uncomfortable but as it begins to expand band, it does feel very natural. It feels almost like, um, I always tell people, just allow the silence to hold you a little bit. It's like when you can hold, allow it to hold you and be in acceptance, you'll start to feel like you're expanding. And you really can connect in on such a different level. It's like, I, mean, I tell people, it's hard to put into words. And that's probably for the best. And it's like, yeah, because it's a feeling. Like you were saying earlier, it becomes a feeling of expansion and where you can con connect in in um, just so many different ways. And like I said, I, and I, some people are OK with it. But for the most part, a lot of times people are very uncomfortable with just sitting in that silence or holding that silence. But I say that that's an incredible place to create in as well. Yeah, because when you're silent, you allow you allow stuff to come to you, which you can then speak about. Whereas if you just try and fill it with like, what do you have for dinner? That's a waste of time. Like that is that like silence is like it's the it's the crucial it's the crucial part. Like like you know before when there's a, before there's a storm, it's silent, right? And then when there's a storm, everything's like disaster. And then from a disaster like fires and shit like that or flooding, 
new life is born, like the trees burn down and then new trees are born. And then there's flooding and then you have all these animals and creatures and they create life. So that bit before the storm is crucial because that's saying that there's going to be a rebirth of something. There's going to be a massive fire. It's going to burn 50 trees, but it's going to be and now created that are going to be stronger. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, silence is a it's a powerful gift and um, most mm. don't know what to do. And it is sad because that's when, like, you know, creatives, they get their best ideas because if you're not silent, then your brain's active. And if your brain's active, then you're not present because you're thinking about other things through visualization mm. or sounds or whatever. That's true. That's true. And that's why I tell people, it's like a lot of times I'll say, I, I have a, a sign on my door and it's like, silence. And they know like when that's up, even like everyone that knows me knows they're like, she's having her quiet time. <laughs> it's like, we'll allow her to just be in peace. And it's like, but that, and I tell people like, but that's where I create the most, I think. It's like when I'm sitting in that space, that's where the ideas are coming. That's what, and it's like, and then when I step out, you can take on those outer external um, situations as well, but just that little bit of silence. And, and I try and do that before I start anything, just so that I can get myself in that space of creation and then being open enough to whatever is coming in as well so yeah you'll true. probably find this too but people can't understand how one minute i can be talking for hours and hours and hours and yet i'm just silenced and i can't even be bothered to say hello i'm just there i'm not saying anything they can't understand it's like how can it be that and then be that they can't and then be that. that and then it's like do you sleep well i sleep all the way through without waking up naturally for eight nine hours and they can't understand that either because it's like how can you sleep with that brain it's like this is a choice i'm not thinking when i'm not speaking i'm choosing to think based on thoughts i've already thought about when i am not speaking i'm in meditation unless i'm working mm -hmm. something out but when i sleep my thoughts there's no thoughts because there's no thoughts in the day there's no thoughts at night because you only dream and think what's on your mind during the day so if you've got a clear mind during the day there's no dreams i don't dream anymore I used to live my life in dream. My sleep used to take forever because I used to be dreaming all fucking through the night. Now I go to bed, nine hours later I wake up, right? I don't dream and because um, there's just no brain activity and they can't understand how I'm silent. And then there's this, you'll find the same probably. Well, now that's interesting. Now I don't, um, I will say that I don't even know, like with the dreams, I feel like I, they're less frequent or I'm less aware of it. I think because there is that still mind during the day. So I don't really, I used to like literally have the dream journal where you wake up and write down on the side of bed. And those, that's also good for like certain concepts or things that keep popping up or certain patterns so that you can be aware. But I do think that um, I, I feel like the dream world has kind of receded as well because of that still mind. So um, during the day, and it's like, and I don't think that I, I don't wake up as often now where there's a dream still lingering. And it's like, so yeah, that's very interesting that you mentioned that. Yeah, I, that's something that I'm in awareness of now. Absolutely. Um, so I had psychic readings and they used to pick up all my thoughts, like to the precise thing, like it literally was me. And then that made me aware that how can this person all the way across the other world know all this about me in real time? And then it was like, oh, my God, there's something else at play here. And I started to question everything. And then I went down this another world of, you know, like the other conscious world. Whatever. The rabbit hole. And then, um, and then, um, and so, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, so if we only dream about the things during the day, I started to understand my dreams. And then, for example, if I used to dream about someone or have a certain dream, I know that that's because of the thoughts I have during the day. So I would reach out to that person and I'd call them up. I would go and see that person. I would listen to this song. I would cook this dinner. And the more I started mm -hmm. to take action on my thoughts, which is my dreams, which is my thoughts anyway, the less I used to dream because I was putting all my thoughts into action. There was no procrastination anymore. There was no ideas I hadn't done. There was no things to do. There was no, yeah. I've got to clean my bedroom, clean the garage. Oh, I started to do it all. Yep, that's I started, true. I started to do it all, and then there was no dreams because the dreams are just thoughts that you have during the day. Yeah, that's true. Sorry about that. I'm just, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, I think my grandson's outside, so 
sorry about that. Yeah, and I just, I, I, the silence, I think, is something that, um, that if you can step into it like that and, and, and be able to expand into it, then the dream world isn't as necessary because you are able to be in such a state of awareness when you're waking and, and be and able to see and receive and, and, and take on like those different patterns and recognizing the different things that are going on in your external. So there's not that need for the dream world to press in on you when you are in repose or when you are sleeping because you have kind of cleared that. And if you're staying in awareness while you're awake, then um, it's those dreams that that awareness doesn't have to push in on you while you're sleeping or when you finally do steal the mind. So I think that that's probably like if, it, if it, when it becomes natural like that, to um, just constantly be in that state of awareness, to be in that state of stillness, then I think that it probably is less necessary for the dream world as well. Yeah. Um, and yet also what's, what's crucial, obviously sleep is important, but when you understand like why, how powerful sleep is, you can't become aware if you aren't sleeping because in order to become aware, you've got to deal with thoughts, which is brain activity, which needs energy. And if you have like five hours sleep and you're putting the kids to bed, you're going to work, you've not got enough brain activity or power to process all your thoughts and things to do. So again, you've got to take, you've got to change the physical patterns before you become aware mentally because you need to restart. So you need to get the sleep in order to process thoughts and then go and do that and drop that thing off and forgive that person and pay that debt because you now have to become a machine of two, three people because you've now got like, say 15 years worth of stuff you never did. So now you've got to like, fucking get a lot of energy to do it like you've put all your shit in the garage over 10 years you've now got to go in the garage and sort all that out and if there's only one of you well unless you get help you've now got to become three people you know what i mean that's true that's true it's that yeah you're right <laughs> you are absolutely right it's true and it becomes like a moving force and then like i said but it there, but it's a moving force that feels very natural and that feels very organic as opposed to something that's forced or feel like this is what has to be done next it's like yeah where it just moves very, like i said it's just kind of riding that current and where it's it, like it, it just you fall into it yeah so I so for example I would I I went on my Facebook I had a thousand five hundred friends I went through each friend and unfriended them that process took like two hours I had to go mm -hmm. through my phone of contacts since I was like fucking you know like seven eight years ago again I had hundreds I had to go through each one and delete each one that took time and that's mm -hmm. not then I've got to go on my laptop and delete all these files and then I've got to go in the loft and the garage and then under my bed and in my drawers. That takes time. That took me oh. hundreds of hours to get out of the pattern I was in. And if you've not got sleep, how the fuck are you supposed to do any of that? That takes mental yeah. energy, physical energy. And that's why sleep is crucial. And that's why I don't set alarms because we don't need eight hours. We need as much hours as we need if based we on need. the amount of brain activity we had during the day. Like if I'm doing podcasts now, I'm very active. I sleep for nine and a half hours all the way through. If I've meditated all day, I need about seven, six and a half. So it's not a thing to do with eight hours. It's just based on energy. Like if you've not charged, if you've charged your iPhone and you've only used 10, like 10 minutes of it, you're going to have 90% left. If you've been on it all day, then you're going to have like fucking 10% left. So 10%. you charge it accordingly, the energy that you've used. That's true. Absolutely. That is so true. You're right. I actually had to set an alarm this morning. So it's like, and it's true. And I can feel the difference as opposed to just a natural movement and, oh, eyes open and, okay, move to the next phase. I can feel the difference because there is that kind of like, uh, where it kind of shocks the system when you, because I never like using alarms and that sort of thing because it does jolt you out of that state. And it's, and it's in such a, a shocking kind of to the system kind of way. And it's like, yeah, so being able to, just be in a natural state and just kind of flow from one state to another without those extra pushes. Like I said, anything that's going to be heavy or that's going to even like the, sh the shock to the system, it will throw it off a little bit and then you have to come back and realign and readjust. So yeah, being I able to do it naturally and organically and just kind of moving through the process. It's like, it's, it's amazing to just see how much lighter um, everything feels, how much lighter it feels to create and to manifest. And even just um, 
in connecting with others, it's such a lighter process without all that extra, the heaviness around it. So yeah, it's, it's been something that I, I think that you have to continuously keep yourself in awareness of, bring yourself back into alignment. I talk to people, I work with a lot of people where they're like, they've gotten to a point where their peak performance, they're doing like all of the ideal things, but then, and, and some of them are saying, well, I'm reaching my goals, I'm, I'm living my dream, but there will be that that clutter, like how you were saying to mom and cleaning out the loft. And it's like, so just working with clearing out that clutter like that, and the more clutter, like you are saying, all those hours that it took to build up. So the more that you can reduce those, those that clutter like that, you just get lighter and lighter. You're just a lighter and freer being, like as you move and it's like yeah it's it's an incredible feeling absolutely so my energy is very high I've got a very good immune system but the three years that I took out becoming my parents I basically was using four times the amount of mental and physical energy I got flu each year every single year I never had it before I got it when I was 21 22 23 24 that's because I had taken on the energy of two other people and mm -hmm. um like when I wake up naturally, right, I can pretty much get to work, go on my phone, do whatever, make a cup of tea immediately. And I feel the same as I would feel three hours later. Whereas if I set an alarm even half an hour before my brain would have naturally woken up, I can feel like this toxins in my head. Like I can yeah. feel this thing toxins. I feel this like I just want to lay in bed for a few more minutes. And it's and the heaviness. I, yeah. Yeah. You can really tell the difference when you like, even if you just like a car the car horn outside and it wakes you up half an hour before your brain would have naturally woken up it has a massive effect it's like a dishwasher it has a cycle right yes right. we know the dishes are clean and we know the last 15 minutes is just the steam to cool the plates down so it's dry but you open that dishwasher the tea, the steam and the temperature is different and yeah. now the whole process isn't the same the plates are going to be a little wetter as opposed to what they would have been if you just allowed that process to finish. That extra hour before you wake up where you toss and turn and you're awake, that is crucial. That's the end of the dishwasher cycle, steaming off the plate. Yes, you've had your REM sleep and you've had your sleep, you've cleaned the dishes, but you need to now use the heat to cool the dishes off. That end of sleep period where you're tossing and turning for an hour, that is crucial. And mm -hmm. you can't, it's all part of the process. Like you, it's crucial. And that difference can fuck up your whole day. Productivity, how you feel, tiredness, everything, immune yeah. system, taking a shit, everything. It's true. It's true. That is absolutely true. Uh oh. All right. I think my grandson is outside. Um, Camera so... uh, is it's, uh, it's gone. Uh, it's uh, gone robotic. So uh, wait a sec. Oh, no, I was gonna say, I think my grandson is outside. I think they just pulled up. So um, do you want to do you want to end, end the podcast now? Um, well, yeah, let's give it about another five minutes. And then we'll go ahead and tour it up because I think they're coming to the door. Okay, so, uh, just just in case we have to suddenly go um, plug anything you want to plug any website, social media podcast links now. Um, well, definitely. Um, I do the straight from the hip with Courtney podcast. Um, Found on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts. Um, I also work individually with peak performers. So I'm always obviously the creative set. I help them like stay light and free and creating. So you can find me on Twitter, Copying Combos with Courtney. Um, you can check out the Straight from the Hip with Courtney podcast um, page on uh, Facebook. I'm all over the internet. So yeah, definitely come hang out. Straight from the Hip with Courtney on IG is where I'm like mostly um, active, very responsive. Always, I just love to have a community that's really engaged so yeah definitely come hang out um i definitely enjoyed hanging out with you um like i said i really have enjoyed uh just your whole series i just really love just the the, the thought-provoking topics that you use the way you're able to just kind of pull out um i think probably from some of the guests things that they didn't realize that they knew so it's like yeah i've just been really impressed with the whole process so yeah thank you for having me on absolutely Okay, now let's just continue until you have to go. Um, so um, anything else like you want to particularly speak about before we go? Um, let me think. Well, because I the one thing, because I hadn't asked anybody else. So the the one thing that I had asked you that I hadn't asked anybody else was the that thing, about Oprah. Thing. 
Yeah. So yeah, I was I, I I really appreciate you just giving your opinion on that. So I'm like, okay, so I don't feel so bad. We were kind of on, we were riding the same current there. So it was nice to um, kind of see that we connected just on that point as well. So yeah, absolutely. Because a lot of times I think um, we have the concept of what we think are like manifesting or, or creating or even with awareness. And like I said, sometimes those words get in the way, but just how you kept bringing that point is that feeling and being able to connect into that, not only um, with the, the awareness of the mental, but with your physiology, just everything aligning together to be able to create and, and connect and ride that current. It's like, that's where you're in your power. And that's where you can, if creating from that space, you really can create in a way that, like I said, brings a really full life, but it doesn't have to feel heavy. Like it's in a very light and open way of creating. So yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. So I want to be the next host of the Tonight Show or, or James Corden's talk show. I don't really care which one it is, but I want to have oh, a talk show. Huh? I see so, it. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah. I see I it. Wanna, I, I, I want to. I want. I want. Half and um, do, I didn't know what to do or how to get there. I didn't know because I needed to be me, but I couldn't do YouTube videos because no one would know who I was on YouTube. And I came off social media, so I don't have anyone to fucking like say share this link. And I've not got any money to do adverts like Facebook, so I was fucked and I didn't know what to do. So this podcast thing is the perfect thing. It's like an interview with a stranger. The camera's there, you know, and it goes out. So this is the per I'm properly aligned with down my path because this is basically a talk show situation, apart from it's not um, with a a 40 grand CBS camera. It's just my iPhone, but it's the same thing. So I'm perfectly aligned. And yeah, you know, when you're at a sink, you know, when Opera knew that she may have been off balance, hence why she was speaking about it. I knew by holding my cup of tea that something wasn't right. I'm not holding it how I normally would. So my brain's like, you're going to drop it. And if I don't take action, I drop it. So again, um, I know that by doing this, it feels right. Whereas if I was doing something else like YouTube, it felt wrong. And then that's when you take action and you change the pattern. You uh, hold on to the banister, you put the glass down, or I start doing podcasts as opposed to YouTube videos. And you just have to go with feeling and action. Matthew. That's it. And I tell people like move from that feeling. It's like, it doesn't have to be the thought in between. It's like move from that feeling. And it's like, yeah. And just be amazed at how light and open the manifesting and the creating is absolutely. And I just think that it's a, it's a powerful and, and, and exciting world that we live in that you can take your iPhone camera and literally create like the, the, and the world that you want to live in. And it's like, and not have to worry about being limited by so many things like, oh, well, do I have the money? Do I have the cameras? No, I'm just creating. It's like, and being able to create in such a light and easy way. And I feel like it definitely works. Like being able to connect, to bring so many different ideas and mindsets and, and levels of awareness um, together in one place so that people can learn and grow from that. That's absolutely, that's incredible. That's the thing. I, I'm doing this also because I love humans. I love connecting. I, I'm somebody who's able to speak to anyone. I've just got the confidence. I just find common ground with everyone. I see through energies. I see through people. I see their pain. I see. I just get people. Like as I said, I'm a I'm a I'm a psychic. I'm a god. I can just see through everything. So I love speaking to people. Uh, whether you're in America or someone down the pub, it doesn't make any difference to me. Whether you're an old person or young person. I can get into your mindset. I can speak mature and I can become a child and be like, look at this little car, brum, brum. Like, I can do all that shit. Uh, everyone has I always tell people some of my best friends are under the age of 12. It's like, yeah, it's like, you got to <laughs> be able to, like, yes, you're right. <laughs> yeah, like, um, like, we all have our inner child, right? We, uh, we've all come from a child and we've become an adult. We choose where to show that immaturity. You can't work in an office and show that childlike behavior, but as a grandma, you are hanging out with your four-year-old child and you've got to be able to go to their level. So everyone has that ability in them to go to their inner child and then also become a mature adult when you have to. No one loses it. They just choose when to show it or society dictates when you should be this or should be that.
You should. I tell people all the time, like, what is the saying where they say there's levels to this? And like I tell people, you should be able to move from level to level with ease. Whatever level you need to rise to or come down, like be able to flow in a way that you can always, no matter what level it is, you can rise to meet that level or you can flow with it. Absolutely. And still be fully yourself and in your whole and creative being as well. Yeah. Uh, someone on Tinder put a thing and it's quite interesting. She said she wanted a, a, a man that can be childish, not a, um, um, a, a man who is a child. Like, oh, you, know, you know the difference between that? Like absolutely. me, I'm a man, but I can be a child and I'm more childish more of the time because it's fun having a laugh, farting, not giving a shit, right? Whereas most men these days, they are, they are a child. They've not grown up and they don't, they're not an adult. Um, and people, yeah, it was just an interesting way of putting it. She wanted the man who, who can be childish, not a man who's a child. And it's amazing. The right? child. I really, you now as a woman, I really like that. And it's, and it's absolutely true because if you think about childish, it's like, because it is, it's light, it's fun. Some of those are some of our best memories are being a child. So being childlike or childish like that and in, in a very fun and expansive way, as opposed to being a child, as in not mature and not able to really focus or handle things it's like that's an incredibly um very astute distinction yeah i like that because yeah. it's really powerful like it's it's a massive difference and it makes sense it's a black and white thing where it's he's either a child or he's an adult but the fact that you can be both again we're all children we've all come from that energy that mindset those memories are there as they were born or 80 so it's just whether you choose to show this childlike behavior or adult all the time and it comes down to is it fun being an adult fun being a child do whatever you makes you feel good because all we have is feeling that's it that's it yeah you got it right there it's the feeling that moves things and it's what we create from are those feelings absolutely uh yeah. shall we shall we end it here or anything else you want to talk about well, um, no, so I think I've gotten everything out, but um, I really enjoyed the conversation. I will tell you, it's like, this has been one of the best flowing conversations that I've had in quite some time. So I do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you enjoy it. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to stop the call and then we'll just say goodbye at the end, all right? All right. Thank you.